get ready for hot takes and insight from local industry experts in real estate, business, and lifestyle. He used to play ball with the Padres. He played hockey for the Lobos. Now they're crushing it in the real estate game. Together, they'll showcase the best of the Duke City. This is All About You ABQ. Yeah, that's right. It's all about you, ABQ. Now, the goal of the show is to highlight our, our city's industry experts in real estate, culture, and lifestyle so that you walk away with some value and feeling inspired. Now, the way we like to do that is to answer the questions that you may have or interview the guests that you'd like to see. So we invite you to join the conversation. You can reach out using the hashtag below or join our email list to get some timely tips about our community and real estate market. Hey, this is all about you, ABQ. I'm Grant Harvey, mortgage broker, NMLS 364-964. Um, reach out if you want to buy a refi. Um, this is Skip Adams. Yeah, hey, it's Skip at Sold by Skip, real estate brokerage here in Albuquerque. We've been operating since 2005. Now, you may have seen Grant as the head coach of the University of New Mexico men's Lobo hockey team, and now he's absolutely crushing it in the mortgage phase. You've seen Skip on HTV's House Hunters, and he's in the top two producing in realtors in all the markets. So, thank you for that. I appreciate it. So, big show today. Um, so you, here's why you're going to want to stay tuned. We've got a couple of guests. Um, Grant's going to jump into the mortgage minute. We're going to bring in uh, our second guest. And then we always end the show with my favorite uh, segment, which is called Skip's Tips. Um, so, our first guest today, talk a little bit about who we can expect. Uh, we will have PhD Miles Harvey, Professor Miles Harvey, on the show, who will talk about his uh, book, his development in esports, and uh, his experience as a, a student loan debtor and how that's affecting the housing industry. Yeah, no, that's big stuff to talk about. And I think it's very relevant to what we're doing here in the show, talking about Albuquerque, but also the real estate market. Uh, the next guest we're going to bring in is Matthew Binder, who's he's a longtime friend of the show. And Matt's got a funny background in the fact that he's an artistic whiz kid, specializes in solar panels. He's a published author. He's gonna talk about his latest project coming up. He's got a new book that's in publication. It's gonna hit the market next year. So he's on the book tour. We are happy to book him today. Uh, so that's Matthew Binder. And again, here's why you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. Skip's Tips. Did I tell you about Skip's Tips? Dude, current events, man. Stuff, what, yeah. what have you been up to recently? Got situated with glasses, cause I guess I'm getting older and it's just a hard truth, but uh, I'm gonna be a glasses guy and they see me next episode with them. What did you do? At Sandia Prep, there's an ultimate Frisbee league and it's absolutely freezing, but I got out there outside of my comfort zone, scored some points for the ladies, um, but to speak to what you were saying earlier, Grant, about being old, um, getting older, I uh, tore my hamstring. It sounds like we had a loss. Did we have a loss? Let's talk about current events. And a current event that I think is pertinent to Albuquerque or nationwide is, is student loans. What have you heard about student loans and, and the recent uh, freeze and then forgiveness? No, I think it, it plays a big role in not just the economy, but you know, kids coming up because imagine starting under a mountain of you know 100k in, in student loan debt before you even get into the working uh, into the business world. Yeah, yeah. Do you know that 55% of former current students have student loans, and they average about 20,000 so. bucks? It's, uh, it's something that weighs heavy on your average uh, student and future student. And I think it's a conversation piece that uh, we need to keep talking about. But I do know that uh, there were some lawsuits and uh, the current forgiveness is on hold. So we'll, that'll be yet to be determined. Maybe we'll talk about it again. Well, let's talk about it a little bit more in depth as we transition into the Mortgage Minute. The mortgage minute today, we're gonna to talk about debt to income ratio and how student loans affect that number. Um, so many times when I have applicants uh, for uh, house purchase, we have to calculate uh, debt to income ratio. What happens is student loan uh, minimum payment factor into that. So let me tell you how debt to income ratio works. Let's say you make $10,000 a month, no more than about 4,500 a month should be allocated for debts with your house payment, right? So that's where student loans come into this. What they'll do is you take your mon minimum monthly payment or 1% of your, of your loans, and that factors into 
uh, your, your debt to income ratio. So um, when I meet with some customers, one of the first time, first things I ask is, do you have student loans? And that heavily weighs into how much they can afford a month. So it's important to meet with a mortgage professional. If you're about to buy a house, just know they're going to ask you about your student loans and you'll see it kind of robs some of your debt to income ratio. So the student loan topic is big because I think it could free up a lot of purchasing power uh, for your average uh, graduate. So, um, and that's your Mortgage Minute. Uh, great little transition there. And I think that the Mortgage Minute really touched on something today, uh, you know, the student loan debt and the pitfalls of taking on student loan debt when it comes to real estate. This is why you're gonna wanna stay tuned. We're gonna bring up our first guest is Dr. Miles Harvey. Um, so thank you guys, stand by. The author of eSports Research and an Integration Education and a PhD in Digital Literacy is going to be with us. And let's get right into uh, our guest, Miles Harvey. Um, Miles, tell us a little bit about your background in Albuquerque specifically and your community involvement. Born and raised here and uh wanted to be an educator. Let's touch on the debt. It was a topic at the, the, the start of the show. Um, I wanted to basically preface about a guest who has experienced student debt and your testimony about what that's happened in terms of qualifying for a house and, and maybe uh, the perils of student loans and, and maybe the, the, the gifts of it. You get your bachelor's, you're like, great. Uh, you get your master's, you're like, okay, that's pretty outlandish here when you're thinking about going to the K through 12 setting just to be a teacher. I, I think that's pretty, that's pretty ridiculous, right? I mean, I didn't go to school to get a psychology degree I didn't use, right? I tried to get something that I was going to be investing in and using on a daily basis. And so um, that's kind of a scary thing. You know, some people think I'm going to go to college. Um, you know, how am I going to pay for this? Like, well, yeah, what are you going to do with it afterwards then, right? And the whole point of going to school was to use that so I could help out Albuquerque, right? I could help out the citizens, I could be a good teacher. So uh, I went to school to focus on being a language arts teacher. Uh, Cause you know, I like literature, I like kind of that meaning making <laughs> stuff. You're a cunning linguist. Yeah, let's just be honest here. You know, I have a way with words. Um, but I think what's, what's more important was figuring out how to get kids more engaged. I'd like to say that we've grown about a percent per year and that has to do with, you know, taking care of the community you grow up in. You know, I take pride in the fact that I tried to go to school to do something that would help out this city. So, you know, th the idea of reading books and watching movies is one thing, but we forget all the other digital components to education. We have social media, we have video games, we have VR. I mean, the world of digital literacy is everywhere. So we are trying to do things that not only uphold traditional literacy standards, but also entertain the fact that there's very real and innovative ones happening right here in this town. We get to do things that other schools or, or classrooms don't really think about yet. So we're playing video games as literature. We're diffusing bombs in VR. The idea is to kind of entertain what kids do at home so that they bring it home to school and they build an interest with learning that I think some kids feel very disconnected with. A year's worth of work, 15 chapters, 35 authors, six countries involved, and they all wanna know how does Albuquerque do Like, How do we do it here? And how can we be a leader for the rest of the world? It gets kids to want to come to school. It makes them want to compete. It's all about soft skills. I mean, it's the tangential things that get kids into science, engineering, and math. And we always talk about STEM, but it's a real easy like word to throw around. This is something a little bit more reasonable. We're actually doing something with science instead of just talking about it. It is science in action. It is sports in action. And really, it's the best thing I think APS has done in a long time is put scholastic esports into action. Talk a little bit more about esports because I know you're big into coaching. We got this great jersey. Uh, of course, my gamer tags, Dr. 450. Um, we probably have one of the best esports teams in the country. Um, middle school, high school, college. It's amazing to see that around the nation, people are trying to play us in games like Rocket League, League of Legends, Super Smash, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, you already know. Well, how can people reach out to you to follow you, to get more information, and how can you uh, better promote you know, your book and your program to, to the masses? I say, you know, if you want to better promote this, start to promote the values of your kids at home. The things that they are watching on TikTok and learning about are the things that we should be really excited about. You know, you want to learn more about what I do, you go to milesoflearning.com. You can check out my YouTube channel, Miles Harvey. 
or on Twitch, you can follow live or watch what we're doing in action on educated underscore Lobo. I think it can lead you to a job and a lot of people want these defined outcomes and learning. I would say for the first time ever, we don't really know where it's going to go, but we know it's in a positive direction. And you know, for a parent, that's kind of all we want to hear. We yeah. don't really want to know the end goal. The video game industry makes more than the movie industry, the Netflix industry, every industry. So. I mean, if we're if we're going to be talking about you, Albuquerque, we're going to be talking about economics. We're going to be talking about esports. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on here. Uh, we don't have much time. I do want to mention that uh, there are some esports that actually lead to scholarships. Um, mm -hmm. and we couldn't fit everything in that we needed to because you're a fascinating guest. But I'd like to appreciate you appreciate coming it. on here and thanks for your time. And we learned so much today. Yeah. So stay tuned to the next segment. We've got another guest coming on who is a fascinating guy, Matt Binder. Yeah. He's all about UABQ. So stay tuned. That's coming up next in this segment. We're joined by Matthew Binder, who's an author, a solar engineer specialist. He's a longtime friend of the show, and he's here to talk to us about a new project he's got coming on. He's got a book that's uh, out for publishing and should be hitting the shelves early next year. Maddie, dude, you got a lot. That's a hell of a resume you've got put together. The reason you're here, number one, is the book. So fantastic. Congratulations getting your third book published. Hey, thank you. Uh, yeah, new novel coming out next year called Pure Cosmos Club. Uh, it's about a uh, struggling artist in New York City who's sort of like wealth adjacent, like his uh, sort of like best friend, frenemy, nemesis. Uh, is like the son of like a billionaire hedge fund manager. And of course, they're like the rich guy's like career is going like great. And uh, the struggling artist's career is not going so well. And he ends up like meeting a um, like a new age guru at a, like a party in the Hamptons. And he sort of falls under the influence of this guru and he sort of spirals into this cult. But like the guru is just trying to like get to the, his like rich friend, right? So. Book's called Pure Cosmos Club, comes out next May. My girlfriend at the time, her like good friend was like uh, engaged to Ray Dalio's son, who Ray Dalio is like the biggest hedge fund manager in the world. And so just like watching this kid like Mark Dalio operate in the world as a like a person who just like has a helicopter at beck and call and, and stuff like that. And then like uh, sort of the, the guru character came from like another friend was dating this guy who uh, led these like large scale like mass meditations like mass meditations at like Madison Square Garden and oh wow uh, you guys should get him on the show sometime and uh, he can basically tell everyone to be quiet for like 20 minutes yeah that would, that would make a great episode yeah I, I ain't gonna really go hockey I can TV. do that yeah. yeah it's just not talk at all how do you even get started in writing books I think that oh, you know the world yeah. right now is so fast paced with digital media actually this is a story about you that I don't think you know we were both living in California we were both at Albuquerque at the time this is like 12 years ago probably and uh, I was driving us back from Albuquerque to San Diego and you were deathly ill and so you were like asleep in the car and he required absolute silence in the car. I wasn't allowed to play music while he slept. And I, this was like pre headphones, I guess. I don't know. Crumpy. Uh, so I like I uh, I like uh, like outlined a novel in my head during this 12 hour drive while Skip slept. Uh, every time I come into town, there's like new stuff opening up. A few years ago, a place like Albuquerque wouldn't have been able to sort of support uh, a big thriving community of, uh, of businesses like that. A couple of things that I always wanted like to talk to you about, Matt, is economically, let's, let's chat about what are some of the drivers here in, you know, Matt will go macro New Mexico, but also Albuquerque itself. Yeah, I mean, I think one like big driver is uh, you know, certain like, you know, like California, for instance, has just become just far too expensive for anyone to like raise a family. Uh, it's almost impossible to buy a house unless you're a millionaire. Uh, so I think a lot of people are leaving California. There's mass exodus and they're, you know, they're looking for a great place to live. Uh, you know, there's Arizona next door, but too hot. And it's already kind of like, it's whatever. It's, it's, it's just like a giant, you know, mall. Uh, but Albuquerque's got like, a, New Mexico's got a little bit more soul and you know, there's people come here for the outdoors, yeah. sunny 300 days a year, skiing, mountain biking. Uh, I heard they have an amazing hockey team at U and M. That's correct. Someone told me that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, tr traditionally New Mexico has always been oil and gas state, uh, peppered in with government jobs. We have Kirtland Air Force Base. What we're seeing now is an influx of younger companies. We have Facebook, uh, Intel's doing an expansion. Amazon's got a big facility here. 
what are you seeing on the jobs front as far as, you know, how are things progressing along here economically? Yeah, no, like like you said, like oil, gas, mining, those are like sort of like been like the the foundation of like New Mexico's economy for a long time. And then also uh, like a lot of like federal investment, like you were saying, like Sandia Labs, Kirtland Air Force Base. So this is like scientific you know, research and development. Um, I think the, you know, the Fed and the state government are still the biggest employers uh, in the state. Yeah, now all these new tech companies are coming in, like Netflix has a huge presence here. Um, they have a big production hub and they just uh, invested another million, or I'm sorry, $1 billion uh, into expanding the studio and that should be completed in 2024. Facebook has put $2 billion into like data servers here. There's a lot of good stuff going on and, and, I, and I like you bringing that up. It's, it's pertinent and it's, it's relevant to how we're progressing. I want to thank Matthew Binder for stopping by, sharing his new novel. Matt, how can the, how can the folks follow you online? Uh, my website is matthewbinder.net. Um, I also have an Instagram and a Twitter. You just Google my name, you'll find me. Coming up in the next episode, we're going to wrap up, talk a little bit about you know the show today and, and what to expect in future episodes. But also, I just want to reiterate, you're going to want to stay tuned to the very end as we jump into... Skip's Tips is going to give you a one nugget that you can either take with you or leave behind. It's just a tip that will make your life a little bit easier. So did you know it's this time of year as we get into Black Friday and Thanksgiving coming into Christmas, the United States Post Office estimates about 14 billion with a B packages will be delivered between Thanksgiving all the way out to New Year's. So one thing, one study came back and said that the number one drive, one of the number one drivers for stress inducing incidences around the holiday season. No, it's not talking about Donald Trump at uh, Thanksgiving. It's porch pirates. You get your kid the last toy on Amazon, it gets delivered, you show up and it's gone. Well, how do we remedy against that? That is what Skip's Tips is about today. We've all been that victim. Um, so a couple things you can do. Number one is the video doorbell camera, right? And the best part about the video doorbell camera, it catches the guy and then you just share it with your friends and you get a laugh out of it. Okay, that doesn't really work. Uh, what else you can do is have a designated hiding spot for, for uh, parcels when they get delivered. At our house, it's hidden in a place that's behind a bush. You'll never know it. And last thing, um, get a dog. I don't know. But either way, I hope you took some time to enjoy this skip tip. <laughs> And what a fantastic show we had today. A couple of great guests in Dr. Miles Harvey, Matt Binder. Um, again, we want to encourage you to join the conversation by getting involved. You can reach out to us using the hashtag below or join our email list to get some timely tips about what's going on in our community and real estate industry.